Welcome to Taiwan Kitchen, a new food drink show. Today we're in Dan Shui. more about that later, but on today's show... We're going to be showing you how we make our English pies. Beef noodles, it's not Taiwanese beef noodles. It's Lanzhou Namian, beef Namian. Oriental Beauty is one of my favorites. We just love Taiwanese tea. I'm going to make my own way of traditional Taiwanese style worm salad. I choose this one is because it got a great size and it got a cheap price. What I like about this really is the flavors and because you just don't get that anywhere else in Taipei. associate tea being grown in Asia. But one successful tea grower in southern England has been growing tea for over 20 years. He recently came to Taipei to visit a tea house. Here's his report. We're here today to learn more about how you drink tea in Taipei and hopefully exchange some great ideas and bring some British tea to you. So today I'm here to find out more about how the tea culture in Taipei has developed. It's taken on its own unique identity and they've got all these amazing tea wares. These are things that people enjoy at home but they come out, you know, here we've got a business meeting going on. And this is the sort of thing that's happening more and more in the UK. People are fed up with coffee. They want to get out and they want to drink the good stuff. And you know, look at all these things that you can use to enjoy really good tea. Look at the tea wares. Look at this really authentic and it makes fantastic tea and we've just been tasting some tea out of bowls just like this and it actually I'm sure it just enhances the flavor you can drink slurp enjoy the tea oh, smelling pots mmm that's so good that's something we should do more of is really let the customers engage with the tea and, and then they come in and they see all these amazing tea wares and they they think Got to have the whole lot. Look at that, what beautiful. And then these gorgeous packs of tea, so functional but also good looking. It keeps the tea really fresh. And silver tea bud, wow, that's such a rare tea. You just don't get these in very many shops. It's great to actually come to a specialist tea shop. And then look at this. Look at that. You can actually get your hands in there and, and pick out individual tea leaves. And the smell, wow. This is just such a treat, Arthur, to actually be in Taipei with you, looking at all these authentic tea wares. I mean, this isn't China, this is like China Plus. This is so great to be in a tea culture, one of the best in the world. And down in Cornwall, where we grow tea ourselves at Tregothnan, we love looking at all of this because it's by taking your national tea drink, we've adopted this, we now make with China clay in Cornwall, we make all these lovely things, all for the enjoyment of tea, which is, as you know, the world's number one drink. So Meso Zhao has been teaching me about these delicious teas, and re Oriental Beauty is one of my favorites. We just love Taiwanese tea, it's so sweet, it's delicious. And tomorrow, can't believe we're actually going back to Pinling with, with my Taiwanese friends here, and we'll be, we'll be learning about how the Taiwanese have created these amazing teas. And we'll be bringing you some of the most British tea in history, actually grown in our very special climate in southwest England, where we can produce something even as exciting, I think, as some of your really nice teas. So these leaves, Matthew, are just incredible. Look at the quality of them. And what, yeah. I what I love about these leaves is just the quality of them, the little hairy tips and the, the aroma. Wow, it's so good. Mm, some of the best. And what I'm really excited about is that we've, in Britain, have taken your national tea drink. We've made it our national tea drink, and now we bring that exchange of cultures back, and we're going to make tea the most popular drink in the world. So cheers. Yeah, cheers. Yeah. And tea is available in Sogo and online in Taiwan.
you, have, you, have, you, you have to pump here to uh, the Western food is usually used uh, the raw like the usually you taste the food the ingredient itself the flavor comes from uh, like onions uh, carrots celeries they use a lot of this but uh, and they, they, they sometimes they put some herbs in to enhance the flavor but uh, the Chinese cooking or Asian cooking usually we use a lot of sugar sauce like soy sauce, fish sauce, uh, sweet chili sauce. So it's kind of like um, it's you're, you're more like eating the sauce clean uh, like you know covering the the food. So it's, it's the priority on the sauce as opposed to making the vegetables cooked well like uh, caramelizing. Yes, onion. yes, 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 yes. So that's why all the, all the stir fries it takes three minutes. Yeah, right? but also they have a most of soup style. Everything with soup style, particular scratch, you know, so many things like uh, you know, beef and tongue. Oh, okay. You know, uh, 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 oyster omelet. Uh, yeah, no, it's even, all about the sauce. Yeah, almost. But, but, but although like, they still have some like chicken soup, right? It takes a few hours, or maybe like beef noodles. They, they, yeah, they but still you can taste the soy sauce. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, they, they put a lot of sauce in. So if you're used to eating Asian food and you suddenly go to the West and try Western food, that's quite a, a culture shock to your taste palates, do you think? Yeah, it, it will be like too light to, like not Italian, but like you know, normal Western homemade cooking is, it'll be like too light for Asian. So Western uh, food in Taiwan is, is not easy. So that's why when you see the Asian guy who have the pasta, make sure they're going to prepare for the tapasco next to him. Yeah, I guess. You know? It's not the extra cheese. We need tapasco, extra spice, extra hot. Oh yeah. You know, so you can tell most people does that way. Quite many many kinds of um, food like but the boringest food i would say would be african food because they it's lack of all the you know resources so that's why they only use one one type of herb which is chili right uh, like the uh, the paprika chili yeah but, uh, it's culture different isn't that it's the same thing. though in taiwan where people are using you know, when you talk about spicy food they say chili because you're just using chili to get that spice. Yes, chili. What, what oh else? yeah. Um, yes, they they because uh, paprika has uh, some chili flavors. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's why African they use it. But Taiwanese we usually use chili sauce, which is you cook for a long time. Uh, you you burn the oil and then you just yeah. It's a typical Chinese way. They, they, yeah. Know, they, they come without soya, fresh chili. What else? Brown onion and uh, you know, stuck in the sauce. That's all. So Taiwanese food as opposed to Chinese food, do you think there's a huge difference in flavor when you go to mainland China and here? The Taiwanese people were originally, most of us, were originally from south of China. So that's why we bring all types, all types of culture, like food culture wise, to Taiwan. And then now, but after, you know, Hundred and hundred ten years now. Okay, so it's it's been transforming into our own style. So like beef noodles, it's not Taiwanese beef noodle. It's it's Lanzhou naan beef naan. But then you know we change it. We put soy sauce in. We uh, change the part that we use for the, the beef. Anything. So it's different now. We are going to visit Taiwan typical bakery and Taiwanese typical restaurant. Hello, hello. This place opened since uh, 50 years ago and uh, they're selling traditional Taiwanese uh, bread, cake bakery, and Dian Xin Dam Sum. So this is with uh, sesame seeds. 
This is this is what? With the red bean. So this one Chinese burger with its regular flour. Okay, they have a more than 15 plus kind of bakery to sell it every day. This is typical Taiwanese bakery. So this all kind of food you can find every place in Taiwan. Okay, this is traditional rice cake. Used to be steamed for seven minutes. You put some ginger and vinegar with the, on top of the xiaorong bao. Normally you can take two bites, but I can do one in time, right? Let me try. Mm. Mm. Very juicy. Melted in the mouth. That's good. This shop, the famous is this one, Yozofu Sifen, and this one, Shuai Mei Tang. And the one more thing is our Zhang Kai Xie's Madan, Zhang Kai Xie's Hongdou Song Gao. They have Hongdou Song Gao for very famous for Madan Zhang Kai Xie. There are a lot of things. Why we choose this and this only? Because this is very famous in this shop. You got it? Juice. Look, you, you should try this. this. You must try. This is the best Otherwise, so far. you will regret. Wow. Even you are in the Beijing. We are going to a typical Taiwanese restaurant called Auntie's Place restaurant. And uh, she originally, from other's place, moved here. So she continue cook her mom's recipe. Okay, yeah, all the students around here, they, love, they enjoyed it very much because the price was very acceptable and also it's a grandma's taste. She's been doing this recipe for over 20 years. This uh, soya chicken and legs, Dr drumstick. Pork chop. In same way. Okay, this is typical lu rou fan. This a gua zai rou fan. Local Taiwanese cucumber with salt, with pork. This is typical lu rou fan, soya pork. Stinking tofu. This is the number one dish in Taiwan. Oh, this uh, dark blood. Also, this good for hot pot. This uh, bamboo. Bamboo stick. Tofu. Tofu bean curd. Stinking tofu with dark, dark blood. It's number one hit. Yeah, it's a little bit spicy. So we're going to try this one later on, yeah? This yeah, yeah, yeah. And then put the hot water to cook the noodles. Then put the dark blood. This is typical lunch and for the Taiwanese cuisine. All right, so this is the meat roll, the stuffing Right, so this is a uh, chicken feet without a bone, slightly spicy, pork liver, pork ear, and some uh, steel vegetable with uh, dried fish. So now, this is interesting part. Actually, I haven't ate stinking tofu in my whole life. I never have it, because, you know, Stink tofu is stinks, but I could have a good try because she used her mom for the recipe. So I give a big bite. All right, let's see. It's a uh, need courage, right? Which is oh, not that hot. 
No, that stinks. But uh, it's a uh, very rich in flavor. Anyone? We'll try this uh, chicken feet without the bone. Look this. We have chili here. Hopefully, no that space for me. Hmm. It's good. This is really Taiwanese food. Stinking tofu was nice. I going to make my own way of traditional Taiwanese style worm salad. Onion, mushroom, chili, fresh ginger, one glove for garlic, sweet corn, long shui tai. It's called dragon, whatever, but tastes nice. Trust me. Zucchini, cucumber. Right, because summer is hot in Taiwan, so we need something refreshing and slightly spice. Not that uh, like auntie's plate. We're going to prepare the veggie first. We're going to eat the roots, which is softness. Right, this part. So this part, sorry, bean. If you're doing that, especially your grandma, you will say, why are you wasting food? But uh, that's my way. If you follow my way, you have to do this way. Right? Pigeon. Oh, come on. Pigeon. Pigeon. You know, this leftover, don't chop it the bean. You can make very good cucumber water for detox. Cucumber and the lemon, which is very famous for Vietnam, if you went to a hot night. Right now, I detox first. Sorry. So now the mushroom, right? This we need to pan fry, short a little bit. Okay? So that so just cut whatever you want to but i do my own way so probably same like other one slice so now we're going to do some uh, dressing we take the orange the water of the the seal then one whole garlic not me on the focus on the food please all right one cloth just smash it it's raining come on not me focus on dressing so take off the garlic I know people don't like garlic but it's good this which is uh, full flavor so you just cut one two three chop inside no the most people use the lemon instead of orange so I always use orange because sweet the people here they like sweetness more than sour so I use my way yeah food please then, since people like the chili, we can have a little spice to heat. Just a uh, few of it. We need fresh ginger meat. The onion. Chunk size. Just one chunk size will be enough. Then, a little bit salt. Black pepper. You must black pepper whole one, not the pepper powder. Right? Good. Extra virgin oil with right from Italy. Now I'm going to blunt the vegetable and pan fry the mushroom. Cook for three minutes, then soak in the water without boil. Another three to five minutes and we'll be done. Since the water boiled, we could blunt the vegetable. Now you put it inside. Alright, so 7 seconds, rest. If you change to become darker, that means overcooked, right? You need something green. You need green, right? Now, skinny. So this be same, 7 seconds, right? Then, I'm going to rinse this vegetable with still water. After cool down, what are we going to do? Just take out each of them on the paper roll. 
Okay. Olive oil. If you don't have olive at home, that's fine. Sunflower oil is works. Oil is oil in. Right? Take mushroom. You turn the cave. It's skinny. Alright, so then cucumber. Then zucchini. Then here is my interpretation of my summer salad. After coming back from England, I was just um, because of the virus. I was just so missed about the the this one, the braised pork and rice. Taiwan is the only place that you could taste this one. And I choose this one is because it got a great size and it got a cheap price. It's hard to imagine that how could you have such a low price in Taipei, which is this capital of Taiwan like it got a higher price level but it still got a cheap price and give you such a lot of things to eat it's quite simple dishes they just put pork and making a special way to cook it and just spill the oil on, on the rice it's it's not that difficult to make it but it's hard to make it into the right taste so basically the, the main ingredient is the soy sauce and pork and you're gonna mixture it into you're gonna make it put it into for like hours to make the the real taste of the sauce into the pork so that while you're eating eating it you'll feel the full taste of it. When I was in UK I've been to some of the Chinese restaurant bits you just don't feel the right because they don't got a great taste. I don't think that they're even cooking. I think they're only for earning business in UK because they bet other, other people don't know the real taste about Chinese dishes. But as a, as a Asian, as a Taiwanese, I, I do know what the real taste is like. So they're not even using a this, the right ingredient for cooking the same dishes because it it makes the whole it makes the whole taste go wrong and for example um, they sometimes they they don't put that much oil in it while frying things sometimes they put too much but in Taiwan every restaurant or every uh, vendor they do know how how many how much oil to put or uh, how many ingredients to put in or how how hot should the should the fire be for example you got more taste while eating in Taiwan's restaurant because you put enough ingredients in it for example, they put enough uh, garlic, or if they're doing a garlic-like dishes, more of it. But on the other side, we're in UK, because they're just decreasing the, the cost as much as possible. So they may not put that much or that much enough ingredients or things in the same dishes. It just don't feel right. It's always better to eat a Western food in the UK rather than Taiwan because they got a, I, I can't tell in details, but they got the same, and they got, they got a different taste. If there's a British people, and there's, there's a British person and he's really eager to spread his culture to foreigners when they come to Taiwan, um, 
he definitely will want to make a hundred percent pure British dishes for Taiwanese people instead of only for earning money. If the if the main reason for him is to spread culture, if he won't care that much about the money. On the other side, if it's only a Taiwanese people who want to earn, want to earn money, he opened a restaurant. It doesn't matter of if he was taking a seventy percent of British style or even half fifty、uh, percent of British style. People don't know what the hundred percent Western food feel like, so they're getting used to a mixture of the Western and the Eastern food style. So they are accepting a a Western food, which it, which should not be called Western food. Jason with his favourite dish and the problems of Western food and how the flavours are interpreted in Taiwan. The two British gentlemen that made a very successful business out of sausages and then moved on to pies are now successfully trading in northern Taipei. I went to see them in Careful.、Uh, we started making sausage rolls, and from there, you know, we took the next natural step in the. The category of sort of traditional British meat products,、uh, and so pies were there. We were very lucky. We, when we first started out,、um, when we started doing things, we got it right first time. You know, first time, bang, nailed it, and that was it. And we we went from there. Each one of the pies, probably, we had one or two attempts at it, and then we got it right. And、uh, yeah, these are famous pies now. All our pies are made with hot water pastry. Now in England. Most pies nowadays are made with short crust pastry.、Uh, what I found, the flavour is different. I mean, when you use a pork lard, you're using something with real flavour to it. And、um, the reason they had、um, hot water pastry years ago, what used to happen is the housewives would would make things like、um, like pork pies for the miners. They go down there. Go down in the ground, but they needed to have a pastry that was sturdy, something that, that was a very strong pastry. And the miners would, would go down with, with their pies, rip off the pastry, throw it away, and eat the meat. But what we found is this pastry is the most tastiest pastry you can get. So a lot of our, our our customers always come back to me and say, "It's about the pastry." With this hot water pastry, it's a very very pliable pastry, and even if it rips. I mean, it, it's it just you can do anything with this pastry, but you can you can use this even for sweet pies. You can use it、um, over the Christmas period. I was using these for mince pies. You know, absolutely perfect pastry, and so easy to make. You know, no, no, not even in England, not even in England. In England, they'd, they'd only use this for、uh, a pork pie. Not many people. Um, would use this for a pie, but the, the best pastry in the world. Let, let's talk pies. So、um, when I was a kid, the bit like you, Arthur, you know, the most famous pie was the、uh, was the steak and kidney pie, correct? You know,、um, and, and it was all about the steak and kidney pie when you were growing up. But nowadays, you know, in England, what I've heard is,、um, you know, people aren't doing it anymore, you know, because it's kidney. But to me, that is the epitome of a British pie. A steak and kidney pie, and again, out here in Taiwan, you just can't find steak and kidney pies. Steak and kidney pies, they didn't exist, you know. So、um, this is one of our favourite pies, and it's fantastic.、Um, this is the steak and ale.、Uh, this is made with Guinness, so it's a steak and Guinness pie,、uh, very, very meaty. We we don't use small chunks of meat. We use big chunks of. Of chuck steak, so this is Australian chuck steak. It's in there. These are sausage rolls.、Um, again, in England, what sausage rolls used to be? I think they still are. You know, they sell absolutely millions of these things every year.、Um, sausage rolls is, is puff pastry with sausage in the middle of them. Absolutely fantastic. Very simple. 
very easy to make and uh, very tasty. Funny thing, you know, with with Taiwanese and sausage, it, it's it's quite difficult because you know they have their own Taiwanese sausage, you know, and we're very different. We're very different. But we've had people that that have tried our sausage say, oh no, no, I don't like it. I don't like it, it's too salty. And then we give them the sausage roll and it's the best thing they've ever had. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a funny thing. The Taiwanese always come in and we sell a lot of uh, sausage rolls. You know, no, probably about 85% of our customers are Taiwanese. You know, and um, it's quite funny when you see the, the older generation of Taiwanese that you think, no way they're going to come over and buy something. They're straight over. I oh, know me three sausage rolls and a pie. I think they're willing to try and especially the, the Taiwanese parents or grandparents that the kids or the grandchildren have been abroad they're very willing to try and oh well my niece or my, my son you know was in Australia or in England or America I want to try this kind of food so so no they're, they're, they absolutely love trying it you know who of course we have some people that turn their nose up say no 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 you know, I only like sweet, it's too salty. Um, but yeah, the, the general attitude is yes, let's try it. At the moment, Hong's making minced beef and onion puffs. Now, uh, for those uh, that are aware of a company called Greg's, these would be something similar to like a, a steak bake. So what it is, uh, it's, a, it's a puff pastry sandwich filled with minced beef and onion. So he's weighed out the, the mix and then that mix will go in between the pie. So he just centers it. He's add one sheet over the top. Hong's doing at the moment, he's just making the, the sandwich. And when the puff pastry, when it melts a little bit, then he'll be able to seal them together. And now you have the puff. He's using his karate. So now, Hong will score the puff pastry. and coat it with egg wash and now it's ready for baking. A lot of foreigners, they come to Taiwan and they try and adapt to the local taste and they kind of destroy the original flavour they had. Right. You've kept really to the English taste. No, that's a good point, Arthur. You know, many people have come over and told me, oh no, I, I don't like it. You, you need to change it to Taiwanese taste. Um, but then if I did that, would it be English? No. This is authentic. This is the real McCoy, as they like to say. I'm not changing it. I cannot change it. You know, it's not the right thing to do. Because then the Taiwanese people will not know the real English food. This is real. This is the real McCoy. I don't want people coming in and saying, oh yeah, but it's not really like English food. Or it's not like the food we get back at home. Now, at the moment, they're saying, oh, no, this is 100%. That's 100% authentic and even better than, than you get back home nowadays. So, no, I, I wouldn't change. We are Churchill's. We make sausages, English pies. They're all available inside the Tiamu Carrefour. In case you want to know how to make hot water crust pastry, um, I'm going to show you how to do it. So, first of all, you prepare 240 grams of flour. Just all-purpose flour will do. And then here we've got 60 grams of lard and about 50 grams of butter. Work your way and just keep, okay, so, like, okay. break this apart. You make it crumbly, okay? It's ready, so it's like fluffy and you know, it all breaks up. Every, you break everything, you don't have big lumps and then now you get hot water so that's about 60 All right and then you your lard the lard just goes straight into and just pour this in 
Use your hand. We don't use um, lard in pastry making, but uh, in Taiwan, traditional Taiwanese cooking, we use a lot of lard to, uh, f to, to make some local food. Like uh, we use the, we use lard to uh, fry shallots a lot. And it's, that's in most, a lot of Taiwanese dishes like braised pork rice, uh, uh, some, some uh, rice noodles soup. Right, so, so that's it. So there, this is um, hot water crust pastry. flying visit to Dan Shui, which is actually in the northern part of Taiwan. I'm going to be trying a lot of delicious food. I want to introduce one of the more unusual types of um, bread in Dan Shui, which is called Bolo King. <laughs> uh, if you're in England, you'd understand what that really meant. But Bolo King is a type of bread and actually I believe it originates, the type of bread kind of originates from Hong Kong, from what I know. But their bread is very interesting because they have a pineapple like iced fire bread. I don't know how to explain it though. But anyway, it tastes good and it's pretty hard to find like around Taiwan. Well, maybe not. Maybe that bread is easy to find, but actually in Dan Shui it's hard to find and to find it with pineapple in it and with the iced fire, the way they do it, that's pretty unique. Okay, so could you please tell me, how do, how do you make the pineapple bun? Uh, the bun is hot, but inside the by ice butter. Ice butter inside. Yes. But it uses flour, it uses butter, and that's all? Not. That's all. So it's, it's that simple. He's going to actually cut into the water, the bread, and this is where it's being prepared to put the ice cold butter inside. So that's the ice. So if you're in this shop, if you want to order something, I do recommend the bin, which is the ice, the huo, which is the fire, and the bolo, which is the bread. So bin, huo, bolo. <laughs> so, and that is what makes this shop the bolo king. <laughs> what you have is the bread is actually hot. It's actually warm. You wouldn't believe it coming from there. It's still warm, but the butter, oh, it's, yeah, it, the butter, it's cold, it's frozen. So what you're having here is something very hot with something very cold inside, like a yin-yang mix. And then all you have to do is just give it a try. You know how it goes. Oh. And this is why I like it. So this is just so hard to find in Dan Shui, the mix of the ice cold butter with the hot bread. You just don't find it in Dan Shui. So this is why I like it so much when I come here. We've come off the seafront and we've gone more into the inner heart of Dan Shui. And where, what, I've, what I'm showing you now is a shop that is special for a soya bean curd called um, Dohua. Yeah, Dohua. Now, um, I know this sounds weird, but it's actually, for me, this is the tastiest dessert you can probably get in Taipei. It's traditional, it's tasty, and it's actually pretty healthy as well. It has four flavors. I mean, even now, even nowadays, you can normally get black Dohua or white Dohua. But this shop has like, okay, four different variants and it was actually the first shop to make it come about okay. in Dan Shui okay. and in the whole of Taiwan, you don't get many places like this at all. I've just ordered the pudding and I've, I've had the, the full variety. I've had all the four in one and I've picked from one of these three flavors. Well, it's quite hard to know what you're eating in Taiwan, to be honest. All I know is that it's tasty. Um, it's a kind of bean. It looks like the kidney bean that goes in your spaghetti bolognese, but it's not in the red colour. It's just some tasty bean. 
With regard to Douhua, the origins of, apparently go back to ancient China, the times when they had uh, like something called mapo dofu, uh, a certain tofu dish with like rice and well I think it would have rice and like this tomato stuff like inserted in it so lots of tofu dishes and strange enough that savory dish seemed to have turned into this dessert <laughs> anyway I'm gonna give it a go it tastes just like how I remember it and here it's really soft the the texture is very very soft and it's not even chewy. It's literally, it just melts in your mouth. So it's pretty good for what it is. You wouldn't expect that with a dohua. I eat a lot of dohua in Tainan as well. And this dohua here in, in Danshui in Taipei is nothing like what you can get in the South. This is completely different. So I do, I do like it. And you can taste the chocolate as well, which is unusual. It's different from Tainan. One, first because of the texture and second because it's as well it's not as sweet as Tainan. In Tainan it's very sweet, here it's not as sweet but here you can taste the textures and there are many many different um, flavors in, in this dish. Like I have so many choices you don't get that down south but it's great. Douhua in Taipei is really good actually. There are many many special places, there are many special chains and there are very rich textures that you can find in, in this cheap delicacy but um but what I like about this really is the flavors and because you just don't get that anywhere else in Taipei really. It's, this is actually very special for Dan Shui and this place has been going for a very long time. Douhua is available from even convenience stores all around Taiwan, but you really need to go to the traditional store to try and get the traditional, get the traditional flavor, get the fresh variant and, and really converse and see what the real people are like like you don't just want to live your life in 7-eleven getting these products really come here and try it although this is a very basic shop it i mean in terms of what it sells i mean it only sells this one product and this one product is dohua really soya bean curd everything in this shop is based on this one product one interesting point about Taiwan is that you can get one product, just one product, like the dohua, like the soya bean curd, or you could get like a pineapple cake, and that, just that one product can sustain one shop for like many years. It can sustain the same customer, or even a new customer base, for like five years, 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. This place is, is like over 50 years old and it just sells the same product. It practically looks like they sell it at the same price as well. Um, but are the, would the user base be the same? Is it only just like the people who have grown old eating it? Absolutely not. When people get old or whatever, as people get old and they have their families, they have their children, they bring their children here. And then their children get married and introduce people here and then whatever, and then they bring their next generation here. And, and it keeps going. I mean, in the West, you don't really get that. There, I don't really see many shops in the UK that just sell one product that stay open. It's not like, like let's take a butter, New Zealand anchor butter. It's not like they'll have an anchor butter shop and, and people will just flock in droves year after year just to buy that. No, you'd have to buy it in a supermarket. No one's just going to go to a shop for a butter. But here, people would go to a shop for a butter or for a product. That's just how it is out here. And I love it. Another great thing about Dan Shui are the iron eggs. Who came up with the idea? Who said, I am going to cook these eggs about 15 or 20 years ago there's someone they uh, because the, the store is found uh, 20 years ago it's, uh, it's uh, a woman they, they sell the neutral and egg they sell the egg uh, not sell today uh, sell the another day the egg uh, one day uh, two day three day four day so the so you got like the the, the taste like the iron I said oh, okay so iron is found is found there is from three days, uh, from the t 10 years, 20 years ago. Wow, so that's where the iron taste comes from, from yeah. recooking it again and again. How long is this process overall? Is it like, is it a whole, is it uh, one day? Uh, it no, sounds like a long time. Uh, four days or five days. 
to make this egg? Yes, you will one day and uh, cook again and dryer, and the other day and the cook again and dryer. Who buys them? Like, is, is it only like the elder generation or is it actually young people? Who, who's buying these eggs? Uh, the teenager. The most, the majority of people buying these eggs yes. are teenagers? Yes, teenagers. No yes, way, yeah. really? I don't know the teenagers they like the eggs. Are they fashionable? Like, do people eat these around the whole of Taiwan or only in Dan Oh, uh, whole of Taiwan. The whole of Taiwan? Yes. Apart from egg, what else is in the egg? Uh, um, the soy sauce. The soy no. sauce? Yes. A little bit of uh, chili and a little bit of pepper. I mean, these are all the classic ingredients that the Taiwanese use. I mean, I mean, all put into an egg. I mean, you can't get better than that. I want to try it, um, but you know, um, I, it. I'm going. Yeah, I'm going to try it anyway. So let's have it. Let's have a go. I mean, all right. Let's see. Okay, it's a, it's quite wet actually, so it's not what I expected. So cool all right i actually i've always tried the little ones but i've never tried a big one so i'm always a bit like fearful texture's hard it's like eating something i, I i'm gonna say rubbery but it tastes nice <laughs> a lot of a lot of flavor has gone into the yolk and I find that very interesting. Is you could taste the soy sauce, and but something on my mind is whether I can um, actually try the spicy variant because this is quite plain in one respect. And I can see 30 years ago that this would work, but for me, I would definitely like like maybe the garlic or the spicy variant. When connecting this to the taste of like Taiwanese food, I, I would say. Like, what Taiwanese food are we looking at? Like, does it taste like noodles with soya sauce on it? No. Does it taste like rice with soya sauce on it? No. Does it taste like a bamboo with soya sauce on it? No. It tastes like an iron egg with soya sauce on it, which is actually tasty enough. So I don't, I wouldn't say this is like a Taiwanese food. I would say this is a type of Taiwanese food and it should definitely be part of it. It should be part of the full lineup of one's Taiwanese dishes. Hmm. Now it's time for the spicy egg. Gonna give the spicy egg a, oh, okay. a little sure. go. Thank sure. you so much. So spicy. So let's give it a go. It's not spicy at all. There's no spice in it. Really? What you need is some chili sauce and Tabasco and to dip it in. There's no spice. I, I don't know what's I don't know what kind of chili this is but it tastes like exactly like the other one. Right, okay. <laughs> oh, but a bit better, a bit of a vinegary feel. I like that bit. I could actually eat six of these a day as part of my diet. I wouldn't mind at all. Better than my normal eggs. This is the oldest shop in Dan Shui for iron eggs. This is the most authentic one and the first one to open. So it's actually quite a privilege to be here. It's quite far up past the Market Street. And here we do have like all the old variants of eggs. We have like from the small variants like the quail eggs to the bigger variants of chicken eggs as well as other, other flavors, etc. From what I from what I know of Dan Shui, most people actually come here to buy their eggs, and the most of the locals, or practically all of the locals, will know this place because it's the founder. It's the birthplace of the Iron Egg. Although we've only touched on a minuscule, a small piece of Dan Shui, for now this wraps up the home and capital of the Iron Egg. That's all for this show. All the links to where we've been today are on uh, below or on our website.